And I'm Robert Bell. We're here at Communicasia 2013 speaking with thought leaders about key trends in the Asia-Pacific region. Here's what one of them had to say about the developments shaping our industry today and in the future. Crystal builds intelligent control systems that monitor complex networks, make them very intuitive and reliable and easy to use for our customers. We've been doing this for over 25 years and uh, have a number of large broadcast customers in the U.S. as flagship clients. We have a few key customers in this region, uh, video broadcasters, and like most customers around the world, their, their key uh, aspects that they're looking for include reliability and efficiency. They, they need systems that make their operations more resilient and more efficient. And everybody's, everybody's keeping an eye on cost, they always have. And having management and automation systems help to make those operations efficient. One of the, one of the key elements that broadcast brings to systems like ours is the expectation of 100% reliability. When people turn on their TV, they expect the video to be there, and you know, after five or six seconds, they tune away. You can't have downtime. And Crystal has, the platform's always been extremely reliable, and it, every second counts when adrenaline's flowing and somebody wants to make a switch. A second delay, two seconds delay isn't acceptable. Things have to switch within milliseconds, and, and that's just the architecture of the Crystal system. There, there is a wide diversity of cultures and countries here, and that actually, it's, it's a good thing for Crystal. Um, it's a good thing for the, the people, because when we look at television and distribution of television and internet, increasing the internet connectivity, it helps cultures get a better understanding of other cultures, which leads to tolerance and hopefully more peace. Uh, the, as, as the internet uh, connectivity gets more available in these areas, the education level increases and the economic situation in those areas increases as well. So one of, the, one of the interesting aspects about this region is as some of the poorer areas are receiving television, it's gonna take a number of years for those areas to produce the financial return to provide internet and television connectivity. And so it's important for the customers that, that provide those services to focus on the efficiency of the operation, to keep the operational expense to a minimum, especially for the first five or 10 years as those countries and regions start to develop economically. That's where we thrive. When, when we can sit down with our customer, understand how, how do you need to operate these networks? How do you need to operate the system? Where are redundancies? How can they be automated? Where, how, how do we automate the efficiencies and, and make the system smart enough so that you're not relying on higher skilled employees to, to necessarily do the things that a simple system can do? The video is always, I mean, video is a growth market, has been data as well. The, um, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword because when we look at some of the growth opportunities in video, 4K, additional metadata, but we balance that against the 100% reliability expectations of the customers. There's changes that are occurring, but they're, they're slow because the networks are complex. They're, the broadcasters are not going to decrease their reliability. And so the, the growth opportunities are there, but they're, the, at the same time, they're slow growing opportunities. Some of it, I mean, with, with uh, especially over the top services and multi-screen, uh, nobody's got the business model down right. 
Um, so there's some of that. With uh, 4K, it's, it's a matter of how do I invest in 4K? It's a chicken and egg. Nobody's got a TV to really take advantage of it. And do I rely, uh, do, do, do I risk ruining the reliability I've got now to go with a newer technology that hasn't been widely used at this point? Well, for the high throughput satellites, this region is, is ripe for those type of satellites. Uh, the spot beam technologies make beaming specific content in a specific region very easy. I'm not sure KA is the right frequency band. There's a lot of rain, um, especially going on right now, that KU might be a better frequency band, uh, but you can still get high throughput satellites at lower frequencies. Uh, as far as 4K is concerned, it is a big deal. Japan's going to lead that push, especially with the 2014 World Cup transmissions. Um, it'll be interesting to see how long consumers take to upgrade their TVs for something that can have higher resolutions. It'll be interesting to see whether consumers notice a difference. Regardless, one of the things you can do with 4K or 8K, if there's more data in those signals, and those da that, that television signal gets recorded at the home, it gives the user the option to play back different viewing angles that may have been embedded within that broader signal. So a 4K transmission could, could transfer four different HD viewing angles. Let's let the consumer pick the one they want to see, especially for sports fans and enthusiasts that really want to go back, do their own instant replay from a different angle. They could have that option. And that doesn't require them to upgrade their TVs, but it does take advantage of some of the 4K capability. Uh, one of the things that we'll talk about, continue to talk about, is the metadata to make the over-the-top services work. Uh, hopefully we'll have some more business models figured out by then. Uh, the other thing I think we'll talk about is Spectrum. Spectrum's obviously an issue. The, you can look at this show and there's a wide number of booths dedicated to wireless cellular technologies. And what I hope the conversation is not who wins the fight over Spectrum, but the fact that wireless and satellite providers have the same customer base. What do those customers want and how do we leverage both technology systems to give those customers what they need? And there's going to be hybrid systems, there's going to be sharing, and once you work out those models, then the spectrum issue will solve itself. Because depending on what the customer needs, what the customer wants, and how you deliver it will dictate how the spectrum gets used.